Amos chapter 5 verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? For the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four legs scattered abroad. Hi, I'm Brother Taz of War. Back at you again with another lesson. And uh, this is a lesson I've done earlier, but um, I didn't have enough memory. So when I ended the recording, you know, it wasn't recorded. It was corrupted foul. So I'm here to do the lesson again. And I hope Lord willing is edifying to those of the whole four elect. All right. And uh, what drew me uh, to do this particular topic, which I don't really have a name for, is the fact of uh, a video I saw on TikTok. All right. And um, this video, I believe it happened out in Chicago, but it's just a, it's just an incident where Jake, you know, was murdered. You know, niggas came through, nin well, ninjas came through, and uh, sprayed him up. And uh, you hear the women screaming, and and um, the environment, that spirit. Is what uh, made me think of uh, the cruelty of Yahweh by Shemir Awashai. Because uh, Jake is constantly going through trouble. We've been going through trouble for the longest. You know, the curses rest upon us. And uh, from generation to generation, there's a curse. Okay? And uh, in Chicago, is heavy because there's a lot of uh, 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 men young men let me say degenerates all right two-thirds ninjas that are being put to death by each other and uh just to capture this moment in this video here it's nothing deep you know it's just the fact of the video and the spirit of it you know because i was once uh walking past and somebody got murdered and i was in that i was in the vicinity i was in that location and just seeing the people that had nothing to do with the situation and especially women you know women that don't even know the young boy that's been murdered right and how they cry out well that's going to come on a a, a a higher scale all right through your how about shimmy i was shy throughout the four corners of the world okay so that's why i read here the book of Amos chapter 5 verse 18 Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord To what end is it for you? For the day of the Lord is darkness and not light You know and this is direct You know message to those who believe in JC Okay that's in Christianity You know you Jakes that believe in the place plantation slavery doctrine And you believe in that Jesus Christ What end is it for you to desire the day of the Lord? Because the day of the Lord is darkness and not light, meaning it's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. All right. The time that the Lord, the heavenly father, plead with the children of Israel. So that's why it's important to know who you are. Now, you don't have to accept who you are. All right. And come back into this truth. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be judged. All right. And. You got those that's judged for salvation, those that's judged for uh, destruction. All right, so um, what I'll do is, let's play this video here to uh, set the volume. Now let me play that again if I can. Now, you know, that's nothing deep, 
you know it's a really short video but what I want you know to you to understand is just the spirit of it you know the spirit that those folks that was in you know they was in that spirit because they witnessed a murder there was a dead body all right and they witnessed the gunshots and then bam he laid out in the streets well how much more when the Lord bring the destruction of upon America which is known as Babylon the Great all right and uh Salakia you know it sound like gunshots from a couple of blocks from away from here that was going on at the same time as I do this video but uh anyway um what I want to do is let's continue this uh this verse here Amos 5 and 18 woe unto you that desire the day of Yahweh to what end is it for you the day of the Lord is darkness and not light as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him and went into the house and leaned his hand upon the wall and the serpent bit him all right and yeah as I speak here I know you can't hear probably from the cell phone But somebody shooting and there's a bar uh, basically um, up here, you know, so something going on up here. So let's read again. So like, yeah, uh, you know, it's all messing my train of thought. So um, as if a man did flee from a lion and the bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand upon the wall and the serpent bit him, which means that you can't get away from the heavenly father's judgment. All right. No matter where you go. You know, you could be from up north, you can go down south, you could be from down south and come up north. You could be from the east, you can go west, you could be from the west and come east, all right, or go middle east. No matter where you go, all right, you're going to be, you're going to reap that judgment that the Lord put upon you. So it says, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it, all right? And it's important that you understand this because... The Lord is not coming to give, all right, molds and transformers cupcakes. You know, he's not about to come and just show love. The Lord is coming back for blood, all right, which is Yahweh Shai who is sent, the son of the heavenly father, the only begotten son, all right, that is well pleased of the heavenly father, all right? He's coming back to lay this land low. He's coming back to destroy NATO, all right? The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the Beast, which is known as also the European Union. He's coming back to destroy you Edomites. All right, because they're the main ones that are pushing this agenda through that house of Esau, which is starting with the Rothschilds. All right, the elite banking families that really call the shots and push the buttons here that goes on. So the Lord is coming back to destroy your armies. He's coming back to destroy, you know, your mighty men. All right. So, um, matter of fact, let me go into a scripture. One of my favorite scriptures is uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. All right. Now it says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So you have to understand that prophecy deals with during the season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So prophecy, prophecy is done in the season but it's done for a purpose, which is under the heavens. So everything manifests and the word of the Lord is manifesting itself. All right. You see the chariot swinging low. Okay. The government is, is uh, basically calling the chariots of Yahweh UAP or UFOs. And it looks like they're still in meetings and still trying to conjure a way that they can narrate and, and uh, push an agenda which is against the chariots of Yahweh. All right. Meanwhile, you got Israelite camps like one body in Yahweh Shai, which really is one body in Satan, saying that the Bible never taught of the chariots of Yahweh, saying that Moses never spoke of them, saying that Yahweh Shai never spoke of them, and none of the prophets. And that's foolery. All right. Because they're written throughout all of the scriptures. They've been here from the very beginning with the Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days. So it says to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. So this is the times of the season. 
the purpose which is under the heaven. These things come in a season. It says a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. So the Lord set forth, there's a time that you're going to lose. And we understand us of the hopeful elect that when we get closer, more closer to the end of Esau's kingdom, that we know that we're going to have to go through a time of loss. All right. When we're changed into a low estate. But, you know, being changed into a low estate in a time of loss and ha having integrity to endure to the end, even even if even if it have to be unto death, because the scriptures say be if thou be cast into prison, be faithful unto death, we're gonna gain even hundredfold. All right. So we understand the time of loss. We want to be increased at our last end. Okay? So it says a time to get and a time to lo a time of loss. Now, two thirds of our people, they don't understand the time of loss. All right. When you check out this video that I played, you know. They, they're witnessing loss. Jake have been going through loss for for generation after generation. We've been in captivity for 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 some years, man. OK, and let me say this, you know, you got Edomites and heathens that are laugh. At the degenerates of Jake. At the lowest of state that we are in ghettos and hoods and projects, you know. They laugh. All right, they'll laugh, but guess what? You Edomites are going in captivity. The scriptures say when the curses are lifted off of us, they will come upon you. So you can laugh now, but you're going to cry later. The scriptures also say you reap what you sow. All right, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. All right, it says a time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. And we are in a time to speak. We're not in a time to keep silence. We're in a time to speak. This is why the Lord sent forth the prophets. Week in, week out, in season, out of season. All right. And even during through the week. Okay. Every day, every hour, every second of the hour. There's a there's a video being put up of Yahweh Bashimi Shai's word. Okay. So really, as Yahweh Shai said, there's no cloak for their sin. There is no excuse, man. All right. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Ooh. All right. It says the time of love. It's, it's beautiful how the Lord put it all together because it lines up just that way. A time of love and a time to hate. We're in a time to hate. It's not Esau hating upon the Lord's hopeful elect. All right. The hidden ones. It's not he hating upon the children of Israel on a whole as a body. All right. Yasha Allah. It's not we speaking against the hate. Okay. Do not the Lord hate. The Lord said, I love Jacob, but I hated Esau. So there's righteous versus wickedness. Wickedness versus righteousness. So we're in a time of hate. Okay. All right. The righteous are hating the wicked. The wicked is hating the righteous. It says a time of war. And we see in that, you know, the Lord is he, he's constantly brewing like soup. You know, he's brewing soup together, you know, to basically gather the nations. All right. His determination is to gather the nations to pour upon them his indignation. All right. Because a time of war, which is going to turn into World War Three, is going to happen. So you got pocket wars going on. All right. You got battles that's going on. That's going to lead to the Third World War. All right. <clears throat> and a time of peace, because out of war comes peace. So you have hate. You understand hate. All right. Hate when 
when when individuals hate each other when individuals hate each other the tension is so high that it turns into what war it turns into friction all right when the friction becomes of a fight and right now we're fighting a spiritual a war okay because the lord said our warfare is not carnal so we're not fighting a carnal a carnal war we're fighting a spiritual war ephesians 6 Okay, Prince against principalities, evil evils of this world, roughly paraphrasing. So it says a time of war and a time of peace because what comes after war? Peace, because there's a successor. There's a, there's a winner. And the winner that's going to come out of this one, all right, is Jacob. See, the Lord has Esau in the trick bag. And that's what's wrong with two-thirds of Jake. They don't understand what's going on. They have... A sort of glimpse of what's going on but they don't have the true hundred percent of understanding of what's going on all right they don't realize that Esau is is being tricked out of his own uh kingdom okay the Lord is setting them up Job the 20 20th chapter uh, uh starting at the fifth verse and on down the Lord speaks about how he's going to reach his excellency when you go into that word excellency it goes into pride all right, pride, the elevation and height of his pride. That's when the Lord's going to take him down. So when he's about to fulfill his agenda, which is the new world order. All right, the mark of the beast, the MOB, putting chips inside you. All right, his identification. That's why 2020 was something major. Okay, it was the beginning. It was the prelude. All right, to, to organize the system in which they want to play. They want to put in play, all right, which according to their new world order, for you to be microchip or you to have technology inside the body. You can go into the fourth industrial revolution and look up everything that deals with that. It's going to, it's going to tie you right back onto the main goal, which is for you to be microchip. okay? So, Lord willing, uh, let's let's go back. Uh, Salakia. Like Let's go into the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 13. Yep, chapter 13, and I start at 9. It says, Behold, the day of Yahweh cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. All right, so it says, Behold, the day of Yahweh cometh cruel. So you got to understand, when you look at this video here, let me play the video again. Keep the temperature low. And that's something light, you know, it's not a lot. <clears throat> you ain't seeing blood. But what I want you to understand is the spirit of that, that moment. That's going to happen across the world. That's going to happen all over the states of here in Babylon, which is known as America today. You think that's mourning. Jake been going through this morning for a long time. Well, guess what? The world is about to go through this morning. Okay. So it says, behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel. So really, this ain't nothing compared to Jacob's trouble. Okay? This ain't nothing compared to the cruelty that the Lord is going to bring upon this place. And matter of fact, matter of fact, let's um, real quickly, if the Lord's will, let's go into the word cruel. You know, and, and, and I've done videos on this plenty of times. All right? But, um, you know, this word cruel is... Uh, when you go into it, man, it gives just more insight of how the Lord get down. You know, he's not playing. Allah side you, almighty, okay? The Lord ain't the one to play with, all right? So let me just get it cruel, right? Let's go into the lexicon. It says um, termination, termination. What that sound like? The Terminator, because Yahweh Shah is coming back to be like the Terminator, okay? termination it says harsh cruel C give us a couple of precepts 
Proverbs 5 and 9, 17 11, Jeremiah 6 and 23. It says, fierce, savage. So the Lord is coming with termination, all right? Fierce and a savage, all right? It says, a savage messenger, one who brings grievous tidings, such as a sentence of death. So if you think that this here, you know, this video here is something of a sentence of death. This is nothing compared to what the Lord is going to bring upon all the world. And especially here in America, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, man. You know, so that's why uh, you women, you women, Elder Apostle Arumlop did a beautiful video earlier. He talked about also in that video about a famine of food. See, there's a lot of women. El Apostle Gabar, you know, he did a lesson about you women, you know, with uh, this dude Samuel talking about marriage and shit like that. See, the point is, is that you women that claim that you don't need a man, you're going to be put to death in this day because every woman going to need a man of the Lord, not just a man, but a man of the Lord. And we're going to get that in Isaiah 13. All right. So let me go back. The Lord said he cometh cruel, termination, harsh, cruel, fierce, savage, savage messenger. One who brings grievous tidings such as a sentence of death. So you got Esau giving a sentence of death, the death penalty to certain inmates. Right. They live out a certain term of captivity and then they're sentenced to death. Well, the Lord is coming to give a sentence of death to millions of people. You see. So Yahweh Bashim Al Shai is nothing to play with, man. All right. Anyway, um, Isaiah 13 and 9. Behold, the days of your Lord, the days of Yahweh cometh cruel. Both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate, meaning it'd be empty, man. He about to devastate, you know, this whole entire land of North America. It says, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it, which are the Israelites, the two thirds club. All right. That the two thirds, they're going to be judged according to the law. You got the churches that say that, you know. The laws are done in a way with well when Yahweh Shai come and not meet thee as a man he's going to judge you according to the law when it comes to his people he's going to be justified in putting you to death all right whether the, the the sins you did in this life or the sins you did in your past life all right verse 10 for the stars of heaven and the constellation thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and the going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. All right. And earlier in the last lesson that I did that wasn't recorded, which I wish it was. But it's okay because we're here to do it again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, Lord's will. Hopefully, it's edifying, Lord willing. Arrogancy. I went into it and it was really useless because it just means pride. Okay? It just means pride. So, the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And two thirds of the Lord people are proud, man. You're stiff necked, you're hard headed, and you're rebellious. And the Lord going to deal with you with, because of your pride. Pride leadeth to destruction. All right. You got celebrities that pump that mantra of pride, you know, living up your own destiny. That's death because it's the most high that ruleth in the kingdom of men. He set up of kingdoms and he destroyeth kingdoms. All right. We don't live off free will. Everything that's being done in the earth is done by the heavenly father. Okay. The scriptures say, lean not upon thy own understanding. So it says, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. What's terrible? Your wickedness, man. 
You know, you got laws being passed today by Edom to show that this world is spiritually Sodom and also Egypt because we're in bondage again, the Israelites, as is prophesied in the scriptures. The Lord going to deal with you. It says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even the man of go the golden wedge of Ophir. All right. So it's not Sam. Uh, let me say King Samuel. Oh, I don't know. I have a habit of saying this guy. I always call him King Samuel, you know, and he's not a king. But Samuel, you know, as the guy that's the YouTuber, you know, he's uh making a lot of noise which some of it is good because it's principle and it deals with natural order but he went off man you know he went against the most high he went against yahweh bashim yahweh shai he went against the creator okay he went against the truth by saying that uh marriage is not done by the heavenly father that man crazy man so everything that he talked about that was good you could throw that shit in the trash well you could use it as far as principle. You know, it's supposed to chew the meat and spit out the bones, man. You know, you're supposed to chew, you know, not be ignorant to anything, man. You know? But you can't idolize this man. You're not supposed to be idolizing him. You know, if brothers that's watching, you know, and you watch all those different alpha male type groups, it's cool because it's bringing us back to manhood. But understand the scriptures first, okay? So a real man, which let me say the elect of Yahweh Bashim El Shai, is going to be a golden wedge of offer. All right. He's going to be a precious gold. Something that all the ladies going to want to be with in that day. Not Samuel. Because when society crash and he can't wear a suit and tie, he's done for. Because it's going to be about surviving. It's going to be about being a pilgrim. You know, looking for it. Um, as a pilgrim to vagabond to travel but also looking for a miracle you know so the lord's going to set the difference between his and the rest he's going to destroy so uh verse 13 therefore i will shake the heavens and the earth shall move of uh out of her place and the wrath of the lord of hosts which is yahweh of the of the armies and in the day of his fierce anger. So the Lord's going to shake the heavens, man. All right. And that's going to be the way of by thermonuclear missiles. Now it says, verse 14. And it shall be as a chase, uh, chase row. And as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people. And flee everyone to his own land. All right. And that's going to come on a large scale. Because you got a lot of heathens. All right, that are in the land of a Babylon, America today, and they use this place as a cash cow. You know, this is a, a corporation. It's not a country. And they use this place as a cash cow. And what they do is they milk here, the cow, and then they send their wealth and riches back to their land so their family can live, can live good. But guess what? It's going to come to an end. It says... And it shall be as a chase row, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people. So you're going to turn back into your own nation. It's going to be about nation versus nation. And flee everyone to his own land. Here's the point. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. All right. So if you join unto Esau, according to his philosophy, all right, according to his man traditions, his religions, his ideology and how you process things in your mind and how you go about and manner yourself in his way of life today, you're going to be destroyed. You go ahead and take that jabby jabbo. You know, let's say, you know, that ain't the mark of the beast, but that's just to let you know that you are on board. And taking the MOB because the MOB, the mark of the beast, is game changer. All right. When it talks about Revelation 13 and 16, all right, he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in his right hand on his forehead. That's talking about that chip. 
All right. And it's going to come down to you taking that chip. See, the jabby jab ball was just a prelude. It's to set forth the stage to get the ball rolling, man. And a lot of you Israelite camps that know that you're Israelites, y'all don't y'all don't understand that. The scriptures say, be ignorant, uh, excuse me, be not ignorant of Satan devices. But y'all don't look into these things because because you're so full of pride that the brothers here in Great Millstone start with my apostles and elders. That because what we teach, you don't want to teach the same thing. All right. But you're going to be caught up in a wedge, man, real soon. Because your followers and those, when it gets to that pressure point, they're pressuring your oil. When your oil get pressed and the Lord used the people to do it, your followings, your congregation, you're going to have to answer those questions. And it's going to be revealed that you are a false prophet. All right. So it says, everyone that is found shall be thrust through. So everyone that's found unto Esau and his agenda, you're going to be thrust through by Yahweh Bashim Shot. And everyone that is joint unto them shall fall by the sword just like military here it is they praising jesus christ but the one that they ignorantly call jesus christ his name is jehovah shai he's coming back with the angels and the ufo ships that you call so you got military that think they believe in a god they're going to be going against the very god that they so-called believe ignorantly and that's the way the lord got the movie set up all right. So a lot of you guys that's in the military, you need to repent. If you're an Israelite, you need to get this truth, man. You know, or you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be fighting against the maker itself, fulfilling the prophecy of the movie. All right. When your shall return and fight. All right. Against these other nations, man. All right. So let me not drag it out. Let me go into my last precept here, which is, um, in the book of Ezekiel. This is a book of Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 24. It says, and they came and it shall come against thee with chariots, wagons and wheels and with the assembly of people which shall set against thee bunkler and shield and helmet round about. And I will set judgment before them and they shall judge thee according to their judgments. All right. So now when Esau come with their chariots, wagons and wheels, that's what we call martial law. That's what we call this police state. And it's going to happen today. All right. Elder Apostle Rumlov in his live stream, he even went over a little audio clip that he played about how the farmers are admitting certain guys who are whistleblowers are admitting that they are in uh cahoots all right one consent with the agenda and they're burning crops so there's gonna come a famine of food and water okay this is prophecy now it says let me read it again and they shall come against thee with chariots wagons and wheels they're gonna come against you with their tanks their fighter trucks all right boots on the ground all right weapons drawn artillery weapons it says and with an assembly of people they're gonna come as 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 in, in the droves man all right like a water all right like water uh being drawn in they're gonna come in numbers it says which shall set against the bunkler and shield and helmet yeah because they're gonna be strapped up ready for war but you're gonna be in your damn house all right round about they're gonna trap you about they're going to lock off the cities, man. Okay? They're going to make sure that you don't go into these different cities and, and uh, different places. You on the highway trying to escape in your car? It's going to be so much traffic, you're going to have to get out your car just to survive, man. Just to not go through a checkpoint. Okay? It says, and I will set judgment before them, and they shall judge thee according to their judgment. So the Lord going to allow these heathens to judge you two-thirds, man. Because why? It's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. Verse 25, and I will set my jealousy against thee, and they shall deal furiously with thee. They shall take away thou nose and thou ears, and thou raiment, raiment shall fall by the sword, and they shall take thou sons and daughters, and thou residue shall be devoured by fire. All right, so you got to know that 
it's going to be a separation of families. Israel about to go through a grievous loss. The Lord say he has a controversy with his people. All right, because on a whole, as a nutshell, and a nation, when you're not right. So the Lord is only going to deal through Yahweh Shai, deal with the elect. But the rest of you, you're going to be destroyed in a grievous fashion, man. You know, there was uh, in 2020, there was video clips, you know, that was going out. I forgot what northern country was it. Was it New Zealand? Uh, not New Zealand, excuse me. Um, Venezuela. Whatever northern country was, I remember a video or a clip I seen where there were people dead in the street and people just had to walk over, man. I believe that's Venezuela, you know, because there's a lot of, uh, you know, th th there's a lot of turmoil you and uh, uh, their country fell very hard, man. You know, they, they're going through Bible prophecy. You know, there was cannibalism going on. All right. So. I forgot what video clip that was, but it showed that, you know, dead bodies were stepping, you know, dead bodies were lying in the street and people were just walking over. Well, the scriptures tell us <coughs> how the Lord shall bring forth a grievous death, you know, and your body shall be as dung, you know, no lament, no mourn. Well, these days are going to come. So, you know, just to bring back the point of the video, you know, let me play the video again. Like everybody out there mourning, you know, and and like what I got from this video, it's not a lot, it's not a lot, you know. You might you're not about to see what you want to probably use if you were for entertainment. You're not about to see what you think you're gonna see, you know. It's just the spirit behind what's going on for that moment, how everybody's out there mourning, man, because there's death. The Lord's gonna great. The Lord said that it's gonna be so much blood it shall reach the the horse's bridle, man. Okay. So, uh, let me continue and finish up. It says, they, it says uh, they shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devoured by the fire. Verse 26, Ezekiel 23, 26. They shall also strip thee out of thy clothes and take away thy fair jewels. You know, going house to house. Why are they going to go house to house? You know, to basically push that jab. All right, whether it be in a form of what they call in today what it is or it be the mob it says thus will i make the lewdness to cease from thee and thou whoredom brought from the land of egypt so that thou shalt not lift up thou eyes unto them nor remember egypt anymore you know because a lot of paganism and a lot of idolatry goes back to egypt all right so in verse 28 for thus saith Yahweh, behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, into the hand of them whom thou mind is alienated. And let me say this, you know, Jake be faking, man, in public, you know, and every household of the tribes of Israel, all right, from Judah to all the way to Ishakar, you know, from the 12 tribes in the household, you talk about Esau, you talk about how you hate that devil. But in public, you the go-along, get-along gang. You know, what's the, my man um, uh, Kwame Brown? Go-along, get-along gang. And we've been saying that before him, go-along, get-along. But he kind of putting that 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 uh, stigma on it, you know? Go-along, get-along gang, you know? So you play that game in the public, but inwardly in the household, you talk about Esau. So the Lord said... I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest. Because who's really oppressing you? Is it Jake? No, it's Esau, man. That's why you're in the ghettos. That's why you're in the hoods. Now, you could blame Jake for the for the community's sake, you know. But then you got to blame the curses, too. You got to go back to the roots of things and see what Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is doing, you know. But when you find yourself to do everything right and try to find a way up, and get over all of a sudden you get shut down or you got to go by according to their behavior and if you don't go according to their behavior 
you just a nigga. You know? You see? So you got to join the groups. You got to be a part of the clubs in order to make it in society. So you got to sell out. So let's read this again. I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest. Into the hand of them from whom thou mind is alienated. Verse 29. And they that deal with thee hatefully and shall take away all of thy labor and shall leave thee naked and bare and the nakedness of thy whoredom shall be discovered. Both thou lewdness and thou whoredoms. Which going into your sins, right? Verse 30. I will do these things unto thee because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen and because thou art polluted with their idols. So the Lord is justified and when he brings Jacob's trouble because of your idolatry, man. Okay? So two thirds, you're going to be destroyed. So, you know, as I played this video here, you know, it was, it's not, it's not much, but what I got from it when I first seen this and I thought about doing a lesson on it through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shai, you know, was the spirit of it, the mourning, the lamenting, you know, that it's going to be intensified in the day of Jacob's trouble. And Jake is norm, normally going through this, man. And especially out there in Chicago. I'm here in the city of Newark, New Jersey. And shit goes on. But I remember, all right, walking down the block and shit happened and being in this very particular situation and it's like it just the lord when you in that location you in that area and you get to see with your bodily eyes your bodily eyes you get to see and you see death right there laying on the floor it does something to your spirit man it stirs up your waters man so how much more when the lord do it on a larger scale all right, he's going to use Esau to come down upon you with that sword because he is the whooping stick. But then again, he's in a trick bag and the Lord going to destroy him for all the wrong that he did to us. So, you know, that's the end of the lesson, man. I hope this lesson was edifying. It's my second time doing it again. I had it queued up earlier, but obviously memory's sake. Hey, that's the spirit. Time say 144. But um, Lord willing, I pray is edifying, man. So I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.